name of our Nabi's father. You will not find his mother's name. You will not find the name of his wife. You will not find the name of his dear daughter Fatima. Am I right? You will not find Abu Bakr here. You will not find Umar there. You will not find Osman. You won't find Ali. Isn't this amazing? For 23 years the people are around him and the names are not here. No, no mention at all. So now because the person is used to fairy tales, once upon a time, the fox and the grapes, the wolf and the lamb, he is expecting to find the same type of thing here. It is not. Allah Baritala speaks. And when he speaks, he speaks by telegrams. It's not like this, like that. Like, he doesn't talk like this. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is Allah the one and only. Allah samad, God the eternal absolute. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He does not beget and is not begotten. Wa lam yakun lahu kufan ahad. And there's nothing like unto him. Finish. Full stop. Now, grapple with it. Difficult. Ask you, what did I say? What did I say? He said, well, you said there's one, one, only one Allah, one God, I see. Yeah. What else? He said, well, he's got no father, no son, I see. Yes. What else? Finish. Why? This is not a storybook. You read the Bible or any other book, I said, look, I'll give you an example. While he, Genesis chapter 38, while he, Judah, Judah, the father of the Jewish race, was going to Timnath to share his sheep. You don't have to remember the names. He sees a woman sitting by the roadside. I'm, let me read. Is there any Christian who would like to read it? Some Christians, rather they read it because they think I might be shooting. I said, now look, let me read it for you. Uh, I might be thumb sucking from somewhere. I said, no, no, uh, let me read it for you. And I like to, I, might not, I don't know, right, let me read it for you. I'll try. Genesis chapter 38. I'm starting from Genesis today. Genesis chapter 38. Right. When Judah saw her, he thought her to be an harlot. You know what it means? A prostitute, a whore. He thought that she was a harlot because she had covered her face. And he turned unto her by the way, by the roadside, and said, Go to, I pray thee, let me come in unto thee. I'm reading the Holy Bible. Don't take objection. I'm reading the Holy Bible to you. Allow me to come in unto you. And she said, What will thou give me? That thou mayest come in unto me. And he said, I will send thee a kid from the flock, a goat kid, for doing me the favor. I'll send you a kid from the flock. And she said, will thou give me a pledge, a guarantee? Suppose you have a good time, jolly good time, and you go away and you don't send it. I want a guarantee, pledge, that till thou send it. And he said, the father-in-law telling his daughter-in-law, what pledge shall I give thee? What guarantee do you want? And she said, thy signet, your ring, and your bracelet, the old people, those days, wear bangles, and your bracelet and your staff, the danda, the rod of Moses which is in thine hand, and he gave it to her, and came in unto her, and she conceived by him. And she arose and went away, and laid her by her veil from her, and put on the garment of her widowhood, and so on. And then twins are born, and they're struggling in their mother's womb, the same chapter 38. Ask the Christian who's asking you this, he said, read it. Beautiful continuity. Is that what you're hungry for? You see, this story, what I told you now, you'll remember all the time because that is this type of story that we are apt to remember. You can visualize the old man going to Timna to share his sheep. He sees a woman sitting by the roadside. He thinks she's a prostitute. He comes up to her and <laughs> he makes a suggestion. He said, now, she says, what will you give me? Same what the prostitutes are doing day and night in London. Same type of, you can never forget. The Quran doesn't talk like that. يا أهل الكتاب لا تغلو في دينكم ولا تقولوا على الله إلا الحق. So all people of the book, don't say this, don't say anything but the truth. إن مال مسي مسلم. This is how the Quran speaks, which is a very concentrated stuff. 
Therefore, the non-Muslim is finding difficult. And I sympathize with them. Because they're used to that, what we call, once upon a time, the fox and the grape, the wolf and the lamb. That is what they are used to. They say, look, this is not like that. God talks by telegrams, by faxes, and every Tom, Dick, and Harry doesn't readily grasp a tele telegram or a telex or a fax. That's the fact of the matter. Thank you. Jazakallah. Before I hand back to the chairman, I would like to uh, firstly thank once again Mr. Isop Hansa and Mr. Nazim Badassi for the tremendous organization and hospitality. I don't want to do a vote of thanks, but I thought I, will, I must mention that on behalf of Mr. Ahmed Didat. And finally, if all of you can't meet Mr. Didat after the lecture, please accept my apologies in advance. He has now left home some three weeks ago, working virtually seven days a week, lectures every night, and he won't be able to stay right till late to meet every one of you. So if some of you are inconvenienced, unable to meet him, please accept my apologies, but do bear in mind, his spirits are with you, and all the brothers that were unable to make it for the meeting tonight. I now like to hand back to our chairman, Dr. Zaki, to bring the meeting to a close. Jazakallah and assalamu alaikum. It's every chairman's duty to bring a meeting to a close sometime, and that <coughs> falls to my sad lot tonight. I estimate we have 2,000 people here tonight, over 2,000. Does MD in this hall know how Alama Yusuf Ali died? If so, don't be bashful, put your hand up, and I would like to hear what you have to say. Does anyone know when he died or how he died? Is there no one? No one out of 2,000 who knows? No one. Well then, I will tell you. On Christmas Eve 1951, four years after the foundation of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, a British policeman was walking through Trafalgar Square at night uh, when he noticed a man lying on a slumped condition on a park bench. He phoned for an ambulance, ambulance came along, and the man was pronounced dead on arrival at hospital. Alama Yusuf Ali, his wife, who was a Christian, had abandoned him. His daughter, who was under his wife's influence, had also abandoned him. If you read the preface to his translation of the Quran, you will see there is a veiled reference to his personal circumstances. So the British government, that is to say the Home Office, contacted the Pakistan Embassy and informed them that since this man had no family, if they did not take responsibility, he was going to be given a pauper's burial. The Pakistan Embassy refused to have anything to do with it. We say we don't know who he is, this man is not important to us, and Alama Yusuf Ali was given a pauper's burial under police escort. A week later, the obituary started appearing in the Times and elsewhere, the glowing tributes to the former civil servant and translator of the Quran, whereupon the Pakistani Embassy realized what a blunder they had made and held a memorial meeting with the ambassador present at which everybody turned up and offered their condolences. So brothers, when we have governments like that in the Muslim world, is it any surprise that we are in the mess that we are in today? It only uh, 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 for <coughs> remains for me to close tonight's lecture with a, a proposing a vote of thanks to Brother Ahmed Didat for coming to South Africa and including us here in, on his tour of Britain and for giving such a brilliant and illuminating talk and also to the Islamic Propagation Centre headquarters here in London for organising this lecture. Thank you. <laughs>